So I tore my ACL in 2019. I was playing basketball. I was doing a layup. I got shoved the wrong way. I landed awkwardly on my knee. I had a full tear on my ACL. I tore my meniscus and I fractured my tibula bone. And the suggestion immediately from the sports doctor was, okay, first thing you need to do is strengthen your legs in your quads in order to assess whether you need to go the surgery route or you know go the non-surgical route so after that point I, it took me several weeks to go through uh, rehab straighten out my knee get some of my mobility back and uh, regain some of my strength and as well so after returning back to the sports doctor his assessment was that no surgery was required on my uh, full acl tear so as part of that return to sport process, we were focused on regaining strength on that injured leg. And we were comparing his strength to the normal, like a healthy population. And we we're also comparing it to the uninjured side. But with the uninjured side, there's also some deconditioning that happens after the injury. So it's really important to look at both and to work both throughout that rehab process. The way that we look at the symmetry is through something called the limb symmetry index. The way we calculate this is by dividing one leg by the other leg and just looking at the symmetry scores. And anything that's under that 90% is going to be flagged. So typically what I like to see with my athletes that are returning to sport is anything above the 95%. In Hamad's strength test results, his quadricep strength during the knee extension test was average compared to a similar healthy population and uh, his percentile is within that 40 to 60 range but his limb symmetry scores were lower than what we'd like to see and interestingly his uninjured side was the one that was dragging down that percentage. So next we looked at Hamad's movement in our 3D biomechanical movement analysis system. how far he can jump, but also his movement patterns when he's jumping and when he's landing. The last thing we checked was his reactive strength index. So that's taken by looking at his ground contact time to how high he's able to jump. So that gives us an idea of how much force he's able to apply in that short amount of time that it will translate to that vertical jump. So jump height on the left is lower. The contact time is, is higher on the left. So basically the left leg is where we need to focus on. What you'll see with a lot of people after an ACL tear is that they have a hip dominant strategy. They're flexing forward more at the trunk and you'll see a little bit less of a knee bend. If you're landing with a stiff knee, it puts you at a higher risk for re-tearing your ACL. So we really want to get that movement quality back to normal. I put a mod through a lot of different movements, change in direction, single leg stability, balance, multi-directional movements, plyometric drills, and just really wanted to challenge him to see where he had difficulty on both sides. He first has to be comfortable with the basic movements, things like squatting, and running. But a big part of returning to sport is that mental component and that fear of re-injury. So addressing that mental component is critical so that they feel safe and confident when they actually go to play. So the best way to do that is to simulate it as best as you can in the clinic through specific drills and movements and then to gradually reintroduce that person to the actual environment where they want to return to such as the basketball court or a soccer field. So for example, for Hamad, I got him doing dribbling while I was kind of pushing him uh, to simulate the perturbations that he would get with an opponent. I had him challenging his single leg balance. I had him using stroboscopic eyewear to limit the visual input so that he was forced to use the sensory feedback from his knee and other joints. I had him doing plyometric drills on one leg, including ones where he had to land on uneven surfaces. I had him working on lateral movements and deceleration training, and we even tested his power output using the Kaiser Functional Trainer. 
The research is pretty clear that for every month that you delay return to sport, up to that nine month mark, there's a 51% reduction in re-injury. Even though nine to 12 months have passed, uh, it's absolutely critical to still put them through that rigorous testing protocol before they return to sport. I recently just started playing basketball once again. What I did was uh, a bit of load management. So I played every second, third or fourth game. So when I came back, obviously I wasn't playing as, as aggressively as I would have or um, you know, slashed towards the basket. I'd say, you know what, um, be consistent with physio. Uh, find a good physiotherapist, someone that specializes in uh, in training athletes and sports injuries, right? So that's, that's something that's key and be consistent with it, right? Don't neglect any of your exercises. Um, you know, the faster, you know, the more consistent you are, the faster your journey to recovery would be.